Well, thank you very much, Vaclav. I'm so happy to uh, participate at least uh, in this brief uh, time uh, with your conference, uh, especially since I'm retired and I'm an old man. So thank you for paying attention. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I wanna start out uh, right away uh, hitting the key issue of uh, urban planning, um, especially in uh, capitalist societies. And that is uh, something, uh, it takes me back to uh, 1960s in France, uh, when they, ha they uh, had the revolt uh, that uh, was organized by both students and labor. And out of that came uh, a movement that I was very influenced by called the Situationists. And um, you may have heard of Guy Debord and his, uh, I hope if you have, you've uh, taken a look at Society of the Spectacle, even if you can't understand it uh, because no one really understands it in terms of the way he wrote it. But um, uh, these, there are some key ideas here and, and it led me to Henri Lefebvre and, and the study of everyday life. And of course, uh, production of space, which is the critical, the magnum opus for critical urbanism. And um, during that time, uh, a group arose called the Situationists, as I said, and, and they published something called the, the Theses on Unitary Urbanism. If you can still get a hold of, uh, of this uh, pamphlet, I think you should. Uh, among other things, they invented uh, the concept of derive, which is uh, the way of exploring cities without using maps and um, very interesting ideas that captured my, my imagination. And um, the fundamental thesis of uh, the situationists is that urban planning is the organization of participation in something that is impossible to participate in. And so um, th this is the thought that main thought that I wanna leave you with. Uh, the, the key issue is uh, can there even be urban planning in a capitalist, in a society in which the real estate market is a capitalist market? And um, because urban planners are um, circumvented and undermined by the uh, very strong profit motive to make money from land and housing. And uh, 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 consequently, um, uh, Robert Burns, the Scottish poet said, uh, the best laid plans of mice and men. And then he used uh, Gaelic. So I, I'm not good at Gaelic, but uh, Ganaf Agli, that uh, uh, they, uh, um, they're circumvented. They're, the best laid plans uh, of mice and men uh, uh, are, um, uh, circumvented in this case, for if you're an urban planner by uh, the, uh, the capitalist real estate market. It, and if you go back to uh, the 1800s, uh, Engels uh, wrote the pamphlet even before he became a market on housing, where he shows that uh, the, uh, the, the housing problem is impossible to be solved under a capitalist real estate market because the profit motive is so uh, uh, powerful. And it leads immediately to the political question that urban planners have to solve. How can urban planners work through politics and cr create and gain political power through participation and here Manuel Castells would be very relevant in terms of urban social movements. Can you have an urban social movement of 
citizens that can temper the profit motive in the real estate housing market? And this is the key question for urban planners. And, and it always takes urban planners away from the drawing board. You can have and be in command of the best skills in urban planning, but um, when you try to apply it, those plans uh, seem to disappear. And, and again, uh, be perverted by the profit motive. Uh, and in fact, uh, often urban planners are at the vanguard of um, preparing the landscape for real estate speculators and developers that are, again, motivated by profit. And uh, I, I uh, so that's my introductory remark that um, ultimately there's a political issue. And ultimately the question is whether the society will give urban planners enough power over land decisions so that some rationality and social benefit as opposed to private benefit can be derived from development. Uh, and I think that this is the issue that you have to address because I have seen uh, at least uh, in the last 50 years, and, I, and I'll tell you, uh, I'll finish with uh, some detail on this. People studying social groups in the urban setting that uh, uh, are attempting to engage in proper planning uh, according to uh, principles of uh, of, of urban planning that people study in school and uh, at the universities. And, and um, it remains strictly an academic exercise because uh, time and time again, one of the key techniques that are used for legitimation of capturing real estate for profit has been calling for citizen participation and citizen meetings. So we have the master plans that are made and then the series of meetings that are called for citizens to participate and express their views. And there's, it, I, I hope you weren't disturbed by the siren, but this is the United States and I, I'm downtown and you get used to this. Uh, someone has gotten killed, obviously. So anyway, um, the, uh, the citizens have come happily to these meetings for years, decades, 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 expressed all their views. And then the power structure just goes ahead and does whatever they want. And uh, this is this is not news. It's definitely not news. It's something you see over and over again. And I can tell you, back in the 1970s, when I was working on my PhD, um, I got very interested in suburbia. So I never just talk about the city. I talk about the greater metropolitan region. And and in that case, you must have a planning. You must have planning for traffic for the logistical aspects of moving people and uh, material in and out of a region in order for the region uh, to be profitable um, on, a, on a competitive scale with uh, in every country. And it's not just the central city that's important. So I studied suburbia and, I, and there was a, a beautiful master plan that was enacted by uh, the suburban um, uh, planning agency for the entire region. And uh, 
the uh, I eventually got my thesis published, and it's a book, and it's called Planned Sprawl, because the interaction between speculators and and those those uh, um, uh, real estate uh, interests that wanted to make a profit interacted with the uh, citizens and the planning commission to uh, um, uh, try to negotiate something rational. And what came out of it was uh, 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 sprawl. And the worst outcome because of the fact that um, the political power eventually was controlled by the housing interests, the specu land speculators, and uh, they, um, they chipped away at the plan until uh, despite citizen participation and citizen meetings, constant meetings to discuss the plan, but the end result was the worst outcome. So um, I studied that as my uh, PhD dissertation. And uh, uh, so, um, the, so those are the thoughts that I'd like to uh, leave you with. And, and uh, it's now up to you to, to uh, think about that, which you, and I'm sure you have already. And uh, perhaps you can put it on the agenda of the meeting and at some point discuss the uh, uh, um, usurpation of participation by the power structure. So thank you very much. And good luck to all of you. And don't give up the fight, right? Thank you, Mark. Thank you so Power much. Power to the people. <laughs>